The TV revival is an extremely tricky thing to get right, because whether or not the original run of episodes ended how the showrunners intended, there's no guarantee of recapturing the lightning in a bottle magic of that initial go around. And while Breaking Bad's recent El Camino is proof perfect of how to deliver a respectful follow-up that deepens the meaning of the original material, too often revivals misunderstand what made their prior series so great in the first place, or exist simply to line the pockets of those involved. Worse still, perhaps, is when a revived show ruins a previously beloved character, either by drastically altering their characterization, ringing them through a woeful subplot, killing them off, or maybe even resurrecting them unnecessarily. It just basically always sucks. So with that in mind, I'm Will for What Culture, and here are 10 revivals that totally ruined awesome characters. Number 10, George Senior, Arrested Development. Arrested Development's greatest strength is unarguably its incredible ensemble cast. With Jeffrey Tambor's dual portrayal of hilariously depraved siblings George Senior and Oscar proving one of the easy highlights. However, George Senior's role in the show's post-resurrection fifth season was a regrettable disaster of bad timing and poor editorial decision making, as the season was shot shortly before numerous sexual harassment allegations were levelled against the actor. And so, when season 5 was released barely six months later, it was extremely off-putting to see George's storyline involving him attempting to balance out his low testosterone levels by sh**ing his way through Mexico with his son Gob. Seeing Tambor play a creepy horn dog simply wasn't funny anymore. And then there's the claims from Jessica Walter, who plays his wife Lucille on the show, that Tambor verbally harassed her on set, which unavoidably caused fans to view any scene they shared together through a different lens than intended. Given Tambor's relatively small role in season 5, it might have made more sense to cut as many of those problematic scenes as possible. Number 9, Claire Bennett, Heroes Reborn. There's no denying the brilliance of Heroes' first season. The superhero series felt positively fresh and exciting, in large part thanks to its cast of up-and-coming talents. Among the most popular frontline characters was Claire Bennett, the invulnerable cheerleader around which the first season's peril primarily revolved. Claire ended up appearing in almost every episode of the original four seasons, but when the show was revised for 2015's critically panned miniseries Heroes Reborn, she was nowhere to be seen. The season eventually revealed that Claire died in childbirth after her son temporarily absorbed her regenerative abilities, allowing her to die of cardiac arrest during labour. It was both a lame passing of the torch and a deeply unsatisfying killing of a major character. Claire clearly deserved much better. Number 8, Miss Piggy, The Muppets. The short-lived revival of The Muppets aired on ABC between 2015 and 2016, which boldly attempted to update the IP's formula with a more adult-focused mockumentary approach. Reviews were broadly positive, though there was much consternation about the portrayal of Miss Piggy, who, while typically characterised as Kermit's high-maintenance love interest, was effectively flanderised in this revival. The character, who had even become an unexpected feminist icon shortly before the revival aired, had all of her worst traits amplified to degrees where she was no longer charming, but simply flat out irritating and unlikable. As such, it's tough for the audience to even root for Kermit and Miss Piggy to get back together, and so the show's central conceit is therefore a total misfire. Number 7, Michael Schofield, Prison Break. Prison Break was, along with Lost, one of the quintessential water cooler shows of the mid-2000s, knowingly ridiculous, yet compulsively watchable. It heralded an entire era of cliffhanger-dependent TV. At the forefront was our ingenious, enormously likeable lead, Michael Schofield, a structural engineer who gets himself sent to prison where his brother Lincoln Burroughs is erroneously on death row in order to help break him out. The original series finale, the TV movie Final Break, gave Michael a poignant send-off by having him electrocute himself in order to free his imprisoned wife. But 2017's limited event fifth season trampled over all that by revealing, in a goofy twist too far, that Michael had faked his death and was now held in a harsh Yemeni prison. The season ends with Michael finally getting a happy ending with his family, but it ultimately felt like a cowardly backpedal on Michael's more fitting sacrifice in the original run. 
Number six, Angus MacGyver. MacGyver. A revival of the classic 1980s action-adventure series was always going to be a tough sell, and ABC raised a ton of eyebrows when they decided to cast the less-than-charismatic Lucas Till, who forgettably played Havoc in the more recent X-Men movies, as a young version of the genius adventurer. In fairness, any actor would struggle to live up to the iconic brilliance of Richard Dean Anderson's original portrayal, but even so, this young MacGyver is a flat, uninteresting bore with precious little charisma on offer. Though reviews for later series skewed somewhat more positive, Till makes such a dullard out of Mac from the jump that it's tough to much care. He obviously can't ever erase Anderson's brilliant work in the role, but for an entire generation, he will be THE MacGyver, which is a crying shame. Number 5. Roseanne Connor, The Connors Roseanne Connor is unquestionably one of the most iconic and beloved TV characters of all time, an alternately hilarious and relatable working class emblem whose family life is one of sitcom TV's most grounded and believable. Though the show originally wrapped up in 1997 with its controversial series finale, which saw the Connors win the state lottery and killed off Roseanne's honey Dan, last year's belated 10th season thankfully retconned these events as untrue. And though some took issue with the season 10's portrayal of Roseanne as a Donald Trump supporter, it is true that it felt entirely consistent with both the character audiences knew and the tendencies for working class folk to vote for Trump. What did ruin the character forevermore, however, was her off-screen death on the spin-off show The Connors, which came about after Roseanne was prematurely cancelled due to Barr's racist comments on Twitter. Writing Barr out and continuing without her made sense under the circumstances, but did she really need to die in such a perfunctory and ridiculous fashion, accidentally overdosing on opiates? It was a deeply unsatisfying end for one of TV's greatest ever characters, no matter Barr's horrific personal views. Number 4. The Narrator, The Twilight Zone Despite how much promise the Jordan Peele-helmed Twilight Zone revival had on paper, the end result was an incredibly mixed bag, with too many of the zany stories deferring to clunky, heavy-handed social commentary and predictable plot twists. The original show was perhaps best remembered for the velvety opening and closing narrations from the series suited up creator Rod Serling. And though Peel did a fine job filling Serling's shoes throughout the revival, the season finale episode Blurry Man opted for a more overt, ill-advised homage. The episode revolves around a woman being pursued by a blurry figure, only for the end of the episode to reveal that it's actually Rod Serling himself, as resurrected via garish visual effects. Though it's clearly supposed to be an affectionate nod to Serling's legacy, it ultimately comes off as more coldly off-putting than anything else. And given the production clearly didn't possess the budget necessary to achieve this effect convincingly, it probably should have been scrapped entirely. Number 3. Rory Gilmore, Gilmore Girls, A Year in the Life Though 2016's Gilmore Girls revival A Year in the Life received broadly positive reviews, many fans were left less than thrilled with the season's treatment of protagonist Rory Gilmore, who, after being left in a promising place at the end of the 2007 series finale, is shown to have disappointingly regressed in this belated follow-up. Rory cheats on her boyfriend, is professionally irresponsible, and basically shown to have done virtually zero positive growth in the near decade since we last saw her. And in a lazy attempt to come full circle with the beginning of the show, A Year in the Life ends with Rory announcing her pregnancy, which, as all too much mainstream entertainment suggests, is the natural biological destination for all women. It was just straight up lazy. Number 2. Basically Everyone, The Bradys where misguided, if not bold and ambitious, revivals are concerned, there's nothing quite like The Bradys, a short-lived six-episode 1990 continuation of the original 1969-1974 classic sitcom The Brady Bunch, focusing on the kids as adults with most of the principal cast returning. Except The Bradys refused to ease viewers into its more mature tone, instead plunging into the grim dark abyss with ultra-dramatic storylines including Bobby being rendered paraplegic after a race car accident, Peter breaking up with his fiancée and dating an abusive crone, Jan and Philip adopting a Korean child upon discovering they cannot conceive, and Marcia becoming an alcoholic. Unsurprisingly, this radical direction proved tonally jarring to fans of the lighter original show, and ratings almost immediately cratered, leading to production being suspended after just six episodes had been filmed. 
It was then quietly cancelled and Brady fans more or less pretend it never existed. Number 1. Logan Eccles, Veronica Mars Despite scoring positive reviews from critics, Veronica Mars' fourth season endured a far shakier response from the famously passionate fanbase who took particular umbrage with the events of the season finale. The finale features the dramatic death of Veronica's husband, Logan, who is killed in an explosion set off by the season's antagonist just as the two are planning to set off on their honeymoon. To many fans, it felt like creator Rob Thomas sticking a middle finger up at the audience to deny Veronica a happy ending by killing off her love interest since the very first season for sheer shock value. Some even deemed it egregious enough to not only ruin Logan as a character, but the entire dramatic through line of the show itself. And given that that season only existed due to the success of the 2014 crowdfunded film, fan outrage was especially ferocious, as they felt exceptionally entitled to a more satisfying resolution. It obviously remains to be seen how a potential fifth season may follow up Logan's death, but for some, it was enough of a dramatic misstep to taint the entire series. And there you have it folks, 10 TV revivals that totally ruined awesome characters. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at usly.doll.you. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.